Good evening and welcome to Calistoga Planning Commission regular meeting of uh, November 28th, 2018. May we have a roll call, please? Noted for the record that all commissioners are present. Thank you very much. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Moving to item C, public comments. Public comments is an opportunity to address the Planning Commission on items of interest to the public that do not appear on the agenda. Comments should be limited to three minutes. The Commission cannot consider any issue or take action on items raised during public comment. Does anyone have anything they'd like to come up and say in the interest of the community? Seeing none, we'll move on to adoption of the meeting agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, moving on to E, communications and correspondence uh, staff. Uh, we received one letter since distribution of the packet from Peter Hurd and Marshall Seymour. I emailed that to you and also have provided you with hard copies this evening. Thank you it's very much. It's regarding uh, the public hearing item and there are copies to the bet to the yes yeah, okay great copies. thank you thank you very much okay um public hearing we're down there already to f uh consideration uh excuse me <coughs> public hearing calistoga hills resort project use permit amendment for the relocation of accessory structures and uses up 2018-2 and vesting tentative map amendment to expand the project boundary at 411 and 515 Foothill Boulevard, AP numbers 011-310-046, CEQA addendum to the Enchanted Resorts EIR. St staff, I, my understanding, you would like to do your presentation first and then we would ask the, the, the applicants then to come up after you? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's what I would recommend, um, just to provide uh, the Commission with an overview and for the benefit of um, members of the public who weren't involved in the original project review. So I'm just going to give some background and also give some highlights of the um, proposed changes and um, then uh, applicant will you know, add on to that. He's also got some um, slides to share. So, um, so this is a general vicinity map um, of the two uh, addresses and uh, Foothill Boulevard runs along the northern or sometimes people would consider it the eastern boundary of the project and then it rises up to the ridge line here. Uh, the approved project back in 2012 was 110 up to 110 hotel units, 20 residence club units, 13 custom residences, and then other amenities such as a restaurant, spa, parking, uh, accessory support facilities, and also a vesting tentative map was approved for the 88 acres to divide it into various lots. Uh, this is the approved site plan, and uh, the, all, of, all of these exhibits flip what the vicinity map was, so north is now at the bottom, uh, but this is uh, Foothill Boulevard here, and then the ridge line is up at the top. So um, just uh, zeroing in on the approved resort uses is a cluster of residence club buildings, uh, the resort buildings, the resort core uh, spa, and then what we're focused on tonight are some of the ancillary uh, uses that were approved, uh, such as there's typically called back of house maintenance kind of services, um, the parking lot, and also an office building that was proposed in this area. So progress to date on the project uh, is construction of Madrone Drive, which is a, a, a good portion of it, which is the road you see winding up from Foothill Boulevard, uh, emergency fire access roads, installation of on and night off-site structures, such as the construction of the Pine Street lift station, replacement of the Washington Street sewer trunk line, landscaping and uh, implementation of a portion of the timber harvest plan. Uh, a lot of these improvements you can't see um, from off-site, but uh, you'll be seeing some slides. Um, so they have um, progressed on certain uh, improvements. You have this in your packet. This is um, generally in yellow. It highlights the uh, 
road improvements that have been done to date. And this area, whoops, sorry. Um, this area is 12.32 acres that was added um, through a lot line adjustment that was approved a few years ago. Uh, it was purchased from DeGarda and so some of these drawings call it the DeGarda Service Center that we're talking about tonight. So it, it, it joins um, the main project that was um, approved in 2012. Um, also we'll be talking about um, this property right here which is uh, part of the ownership of the Bingham Ranch and that's uh, owned by the people who submitted that letter. So um, in general this um, proposal would amend um, the use permit to relocate this service facility building up here, the parking lot and the offices, and then some of the um, service uses that are associated with the hotel. And it would um, relocate them to this area on the land that was purchased and um, subsumed into the main project site. And just in general, it would relocate the wine caves, the offices, housekeeping and laundry, um, what's called engineering, the shop storage and offices, employee facilities, um, receiving and purchasing, and then miscellaneous, including the um, parking facilities, uh, water tanks, uh, the electric cart storage, uh, and charging station. So um, this would be a representation of what was approved um, for disturbance as part of the original project. There's going to be uh, an access road going through here to complete the fire access loop so that there is uh, access all around the property. And um, this area here would be um, affected by the proposed relocated improvements. And then this is just an um, overview of the parking lot, um, water tanks, this is uh, employee parking, this is be valet parking, and uh, several buildings uh, for maintenance of the vehicles, etc. And then uh, possible caves into the hillside. So um, as I mentioned, uh, there has been some concern about uh, possible ability to screen these improvements from um, a designated scenic highway, which is designated in the Calistoga General Plan. If for some reason the trees on this property were thinned out or removed voluntarily or involuntarily, um, it would obviously require approval by the city at some level, but um, there was concern that those, the proposed relocated improvements would then be visible from the scenic highway, which is uh, located down below, as well as other locations in the valley. Um, so we are um, recommending an additional condition of approval, which I've given you copies of tonight. And this would um, provide that the final improvement plans for this area include an evergreen landscaping, uh, buffer screening, um, and it goes on to say it's sufficient height and density to screen the improvements from the scenic corridor and it has to be maintained throughout the life of the project and then uh, I also suggested adding that alternative measures could be done in the interim while the trees are growing um, to their full height or the height that's necessary to screen the improvements. Um, so And as detailed in the staff report, um, the general plan designates this property as rural residential hillside, which is the same designation as the resort itself. Uh, visitor accommodations are allowed in this designation. Um, the structures and uses proposed for relocation are accessory to and in support of residences and visitor accommodations, which would be consistent with this designation. There are no general plan entry corridor or character area overlays that apply to the service center area. Um, this project is also consistent with the zoning code. It's um, similar in use to other uh, uses that are allowed by a use permit in the rural residential hillside district, such as religious institutions, public facilities, contractor storage yards. Uh, 
For example, a religious institution could potentially require a substantial amount of parking similar to the proposed parking area. Both a contractor storage yard and a public corporation yard could require similar activities and indoor-outdoor storage similar to the back of house buildings that are proposed. And um, the uh, Calistoga Municipal Code allows for the establishment of new accessory buildings and structures in this um, zoning district uh, through approval of an administrative use permit. Uh, due to the size and number of structures proposed to be relocated, I have uh, determined that it should be referred to the Planning Commission for its review. And um, a recommended condition of approval would prohibit construction of the accessory structures until construction has commenced on the property's primary use so that they would, be, in fact, be accessory structures. The final designs are subject to design review approval guided by the adopted Enchanted Resorts Development Standards and Design Guidelines. Um, in terms of the vesting tentative map, there are revisions um, proposed to the original tenet approved tentative map to incorporate the 12.32 acres, and there's also some revisions um, required to reflect the new project name, the total acreage, the physical boundaries of the area to be added, and revised on-site circulation and utility locations, which have been evolving as the project has been constructed. In terms of environmental review, an addendum to the previously certified final EIR for the Enchanted Resorts project has been prepared. An addendum is um, allowed under CEQA if the proposed modifications to the original project are not substantial changes to the approved project, would not cause any new significant impact, and would not substantially increase the severity of a previously identified significant impact that would require major revisions to the FEIR, the final EIR. And uh, we did do an initial study, the consultant did, and uh, the addendum concluded that all potential environmental impacts would be the same or nearly equivalent to the impacts previously analyzed, and there have been no changes in the environmental conditions on the property not contemplated and analyzed in the final EAR. That would result in new or substantially more severe environmental impacts. The proposed project would be required to implement all of the adopted final EAR mitigation measures. I've highlighted some of the um, potential impacts that are discussed in the addendum and the conclusions about that analysis. And we're very fortunate tonight to have two representatives from the environmental consultant that prepared um, the original EIR. And so uh, if you have questions about the addendum, they are available. Um, the findings that are necessary to approve the use permit and the addendum to the EIR are included in the two resolutions that are recommended for adoption. Um, the first one, adopt the addendum to the EIR, and then if you uh, approve that resolution, then it's recommended that you approve the resolution for the use permit amendment and amendments to the vesting tentative map with the additional condition of approval that has been distributed to you tonight. Um, I also just wanted to remind you that before you participate um, in, your, in the review of this item that you should disclose any communications you had with the applicant or the public. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer questions. And um, just keeping in mind that the applicant will also be making a presentation um, about the project. Thank you. Uh, staff, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner, do you have any questions of staff? None? No, just to be clear, there's no additional score footage, just going to be completely transported to the new. It's a rearrangement of basically what was approved. Yes. And, and to answer your question, I'll ask the question, has anyone here, any of the commissioners had any communications with the applicant? Uh, obviously, I have had communication with staff and talking about this, but I have not sat down and had any formal discussions of any kind with the commissioners and myself. So um, if anyone else has anything, just so we are clear about that. I did go out and visit the property to okay. see the existing, the current work, and also the new location that this is uh, being proposed for. Okay. I also got a uh, driving tour myself. Yes, and I have uh, been to the site twice with Aaron. I have also just in the last few days um, communicated by email uh, with Aaron 
with both a couple of questions and noting uh, specifically one of my concerns. Thank you. I too did an automobile tour of the site. Okay, thank you very much. That being said, if the applicant would like to come up and um, give their presentation, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Planning Commissioners and staff. Uh, thank you for having us this evening. My name is uh, Aaron Harkin. I am the uh, project manager for the uh, Calistoga Hills development team. I uh, am here along with m part of my uh, team, uh, which includes uh, Diane Kinderman here of uh, Abbott and Kinderman uh, Law Firm, uh, John Williams and uh, Kate Furland of uh, Environmental Resource Solutions, uh, doing our forestry management, and uh, Jason Kirchman of uh, BKF Engineers. As you're aware, our project was approved a few years back, and since then, we've been steadily progressing on our construction efforts. After the resort was approved, we were able to acquire some additional lands, as Lynn pointed out, here adjacent to the project. As a part of that transaction, we were able to get a lot line approval from the city to incorporate these lands into the overall project. So we went from 88 acres originally to now 100 acres in total. We know that parking, garbage, deliveries, and back of house are all unsightly components of a project like this. So our objective <clears throat> is to simply move these already approved components and activities down the hill so to these new lands such that it does not detract from the guest experience. This will allow us to add some additional breathing room up on the ridge line and to space out our structures to enhance the overall forest aesthetic. Therefore, we are here this evening to seek approvals for allowing us to relocate the previously already approved accessory structures and uses, amend our vesting tentative map to be in concert with our already approved lot line, and certify the associated environmental CEQA review. Moreover, let me be very clear. All conditions, as Lynn also stated, all conditions of approval use permit, design guidelines, development standards, mitigation measures certified as part of the resort will also continue to be in effect for these new lands. We are not seeking any new uses or structures and specifically we're not asking for addition additional hotel units or along the ridge line. These approvals simply make the resort endeavor a better overall project as not only do we continue to hide the parking and back of house facilities from the community at large, but then also we hide this component within the site so that it cannot be seen by guests and therefore create a better product. Additionally, circulation is improved in that as part of our original entitlements, we had an easement taking us down through this back side here and out to Highway 29. With these approvals, we create a loop system such that what the uh, uh, circulation of the project is you know circulating throughout the uh, the site and we have a, a, a better egress out to the uh, highway 29 in case of an emergency <clears throat> our main project entrance will will be continue to be our only point of access and all pro all vehicles that uh, come to the site will go through our main point of entry here with guests continuing up the hill, up to the ridge line, with deliveries, garbage, food, et cetera, all coming to the back of house facility here. I understand that there's some recent concerns of our uh, uh, recent construction activities in that we re installed the driveway uh, through the, our neighbors, uh, the Garda family, starting from here going down to Highway 29. Th at this point is where we have our uh, connection to the city utilities. So we made those connections and by doing that we did the trenching work and then repaved the driveway going back up to this point right here. Again, that, is, that access there is only in case of an emergency and will not ever be used other than for a, an emergency situation. All resort activity goes through our main entrance of the project here. 
So it's been a little while since we got our approvals, and thought I would share with you a few pictures of what we've been up to. As part of our contract with the city, we not only made uh, in-lieu cash contributions, but then we also made infrastructure <coughs> contributions. Part of that was to install a sewer line going from the back behind the Vermeil Clinic, across Washington Street, down the uh, fairway extension, back across the ballpark or ball yard there, over to the bike path, and all the way down to the treatment plant. A little over a mile of sewer infrastructure, which is the vital artery of town. That was part of our contribution to the community. Additionally, we installed a sewer line all the way up and down Pine Street and installed a uh, lift station there at the end of the street, which would take care of all the affluent from all the houses up and down Cedar Street and Pine, and essentially taking care of that entire corridor of town. After that, we started on our roadway infrastructure. And presumably everyone in town saw our entrance. As the, the dirt showed there is where we got started, but now we're up into the hillside and building our, uh, building our roads. Because it's a forested hillside with tight working quarters, it's a very sequential process and it takes time. We can't attack from all different angles if it was a flat site like uh, our friends across town. You can see here we have uh, part of our road building efforts here with uh, retaining walls and uh, working in and around trees. We've done uh, substantial efforts to uh, work within the hillside and saving trees throughout. We have a culvert crossing here, which uh, was pointed to earlier. And you can see here we've uh, got paving uh, going up uh, Madrone which is our main artery up to the top of the hill, essentially getting us to the ridge line. The next year, we have uh, one more year of uh, infrastructure work along the ridge line, and then we go vertical with our buildings. See here, this is our uh, back uh, service road that's been uh, recently built, along with some finished roadway going up the hill. And so this is uh, a little video of uh, some of my amateur drone work that uh, give you a little insights as to the feeling of the roadway. So unfortunately I could not, I was not tech savvy to put some nice elevator music to this. So you'll just have to listen to me as uh, we go up the, the hairpin turns here. Uh, again, I'm really bad at uh, drone work as the, 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 the young kids with all the video games are obviously much more skilled than me. But uh, hopefully it starts to give you a flavor of uh, as you progress up the hillside here. So you go past those two hairpin turns that folks can see from Highway 29 and as we start to get into the forest uh, this right-hand turn here is where that crossing is at. As you can see, our culvert down below, and you can see the uh, soils on top of that, which we'll be able to replant uh, those uh, above that uh, culvert, allowing us to make that a nice little uh, corridor there, as opposed to doing a traditional span bridge. So here, obviously, you can get a, a new sense of uh, being in the uh, in the forest. And unfortunately, uh, I was trying to get this thing onto the speed mode, but again, I'm, uh, forgive me for my uh, limited drone stuff as I've had a few accidents with it already. <laughs> so that's actually me standing there. So I started it off at the entrance and zoomed up over my head. So um, it continues to go up the ridge line here. That's the uh, ancillary road that goes to the, the back side of the property where we'll have uh, some additional uh, uh, estate lots. But guests continue up this, uh, this avenue here. We get uh, a little bit of sunshine. So this is kind of an interesting little spot as I uh, have some of the workers uh, coming at me. 
We'll see here in a moment. So made it past the truck without getting ran over. But you can see here the intimacy of how the, the road intertwines with the, uh, the trees as uh, trees still continue to hang over the roadway, which again makes the drone efforts uh, pretty uh, exciting. It's, uh, it's not just an open, clear pathway. But, um, you, get, uh, you get a little flavor of how the, uh, how the driveway interlacks, interacts with the hillside as we uh, specifically moved the road over a touch in order to build fill walls and maintain the, uh, the cut side on the right-hand side, that uh, natural aesthetic for the, to the greatest extent possible. So coming up here is where I had a little accident, <laughs> but it caught itself. That's why that's you pay the big bucks for those machines. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, yeah, it caught itself and reestablished, and I got through my heart attack, and <laughs> there we go. So if Lynn could kindly take me back to the PowerPoint there. Don't give up your day job. Right? Yeah. I, I have people coming up to me all the time asking me to do drone work, and it's like <laughs> I want to, somebody to teach me, not just to take my job over. But uh, getting back to focusing again here on the application. So folks will uh, start off at uh, Highway 29 here and navigate up the, uh, the hillside. As you can see here, this is a, a view looking towards town. And this is that, uh, that crossing that was just mentioned right here. But you can see essentially this is the, uh, uh, the, the four acres associated with this uh, p parking facility. Uh, we'll have some additional wayfinding uh, for, so that guests continue to go up the hill. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be planting right here uh, on top of the bridge. We specifically di designed it that way so that uh, we have a nice little uh, corridor here so that essentially only those people that know to go back over here, uh, i.e. garbage, food, delivery, et cetera, uh, will go over there. This is a little bit more of an acute uh, visual here. Uh, as you can see, the outline of the, uh, the, the, the proposed parking area, but you can see specifically the uh, elevation of the vehicles on 29 and the dense forest in between as this is uh, elevated up above. Here's an opposing view looking back as we uh, had some open area here. This is how we got to build our uh, service road going up to the hill. So as I stated before, we are not asking for anything new or anything more. Rather, we are simply asking to be allowed to move already approved elements of this project down the hill. We are not in seeking any new uses or any new hotel units. Moving the parking down the hill gives us a more breathing room along the ridge line to reduce density and makes this an overall better project. We appreciate your consideration of our application and we ask for your support and approval. Thank you. Should you have any questions, uh, obviously I hope to be able to answer along with my team. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions of the applicant before I open the public hearing? I will have. You want to hold them until later, Tim? No. Would you like to? Okay. Yeah, a couple things. Sure. Um, Aaron, the, yes, sir. Um, the first thing I want to mention, it, you know, it calls for in this uh, process the potential removal in your forest forest forester program of a 219 trees mm -hmm. the question I have is is in the in the previous location for it what I'll call the approved location mm -hmm. at the top of the ridge has your uh, tree mo removal program made it up to that area yet have you already removed trees where the parking was originally no we have not we've not touched uh, so you haven't done that yet no so understanding that as you progress you're gonna you know move the chess pieces 
um, as you have sort of more land to work with up there is it fair to say that probably in the end you're going to have a quid pro quo of 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 trees tree removal well in terms of uh at the end of the day, the, 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 it's a net benefit of trees in the sense that we'll be taking down less down at the bottom of the hill than we would up at the top of the hill. That, that was my question, yeah. So and I it, have it, uh, it, you the experts here that I can obviously speak to it much more. Uh, right. You didn't mention that in the environmental analysis, and I thought, well, this is... We, we specifically did not want to get into that because, in essence, the, the four acres associated with what would be arguably up on the ridge line, right. moving that down, the... Uh, the exact uh, definition of those parameters have been a little bit fluid. So right. we essentially took where we know that those, uh, those the, the, that tree would be those trees would be removed and did our analysis as such. Okay. And I'd be happy to uh, bring our forester up here to speak to that in more uh, detail if you like. Well, we don't need to, but I I mean I don't need to. But the um, I just for realization, there's it, it is fair to us then to look forward to the fact that in the net finished program you will actually have potentially removed fewer trees with this relocation well not only fewer trees but again i'll just i'll just steal uh steal our foresters words here in the sense that the tree stand is different on the top of the hill than it is down below down below it was an old uh abandoned orchard so the trees down there have a lower uh, uh they do not have as much growth and there's much more understory there as opposed to up on the top of the hill where those trees are much more mature, mature. So therefore, in essence, those trees that are down at the lower level is part of the forest management efforts that we would have to do clearing anyway. And so, in essence, by moving this parking down, we're taking out, in essence, less desirable trees rather than what would be up on the ridge line. Okay. Um, my second question is dealing with, and I think is the genesis of the potential um, additional conditions I was quite concerned in in the revised uh, the, the addendum in the environmental um, report and I it will just read here that that it, this the statement in the environmental report is the relocated buildings would not be visible from any parts of Calistoga because they would be screened by vegetation mm -hmm. and I've never seen in a site analysis like this where you are re you are relying for mitigation for your project you're relying on somebody else's property and somebody else's trees right well, I guess I can speak to that in a couple ways in the sense that uh, the the conditions that uh, uh, Lynn put forth we were already planning to do so we're we're happy to accept that uh, in addition to those lands you know, for lack of better terms, are landlocked. They're, those trees, uh, to do anything on those properties other than, God forbid, a fire to take place, we'd A, have to go through a process of uh, approvals through the city, but then B, would need access through our properties to get there. So there's no, uh, there's no way that those uh, properties can be developed such that tree removal would take place. Now, well, fire I, obviously is a much different circumstance. I understand that, but I, it's still a concern that that you are proposing a mitigation by using somebody else's property and as it stands here um, it seems appropriate that in this addendum mm -hmm. there should have been a discussion as to what you propose to do to mitigate on site uh, for the potential of a fire or something like that 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 if those trees went away for any reason, mm -hmm. um, you know, this still needs to be mitigated. I, as, and don't get me wrong, I am, the idea of having the back house facilities moved, um, I, you know, I think is, is a smart move in terms of the plan of the resort. And I think in the long run, it works better on a lot of sort of mechanical basis. Yeah. Um, I am, I still have a couple of concerns. I know that you know trash trucks tend to show up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, that probably won't get any loud claps from the Binghams, but um, or your guests for that matter. But but still, I think that we need to be satisfied 
that that the visual aesthetic of not seeing any of those facilities from the highway is something that is mitigated within your property. Um, a couple of suggestions I would have is that is that perhaps we could you could develop and submit to staff and maybe staff could circulate by email to us a conceptual more detailed idea of what happens between the edge of pavement and the top of slope and the bottom of slope in terms of, of what might happen there for planting and also in between the two layers of parking planting that will take care of the upper retaining portions um, if if you could develop something conceptually that we had as a benchmark to sort of measure by um, that would be worthwhile the second thing is is that seeing the finished road and the retaining that you have um, I would hope that and assuming you will be using the same shot creek process on your retaining I would hope that the shot creek on this new section would be significantly darker than what you used before the darker it is the more it just goes away and and it you know you don't have to wait for vines to grow on it it's, it's gone right away so we will get to the conditions because I've got a, a couple of notes of perhaps language issues that, that we get to that but I was concerned about that and I remain concerned about it um, and I'm hoping for a commitment that, that this will not be a problem and as this gets changed in the amendment I would suggest that as we may approve if we approve the addendum to the EIR that language gets changed in the in this in this addendum to specifically address the on-site mitigation for aesthetics sure no I'm uh, happy to uh, again take on the the condition that uh, Lynn had proposed in terms of doing that additional planting but it's actually planting that we're required to do anyway as it relates to the area between where our travel way is at and the existing uh, forest that area has to be replanted as part of our overall project conditions well, yeah, and I appreciate that uh -huh. um, but still it's it's being pointed out as a mitigation under the under the title of aesthetics mm -hmm. in the environmental document mm -hmm. I think it needs to be addressed in the environmental document under aesthetics um, understanding that you're required to do that I think that that the public needs satisfaction that that it that mitigation has been addressed as part of, of a final EIR ad addendum sure no like I said I, I don't want to speak for the uh, the EIR experts that we have here uh, but you know as it relates to planting we're all for it I mean that that's part of our mantra and what we uh, what we want to do is uh, again hide that so uh, what you're proposing is definitely in line with what uh, our objectives are, so we don't have any uh, problems with that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Well, I suppose since you're standing there, I could ask sure. uh, my questions now. The letter that we received from the neighbors, I assume you've read it, and I wanted to see if you could take the opportunity to address some of those the, the issues that came up. Some of them were specific to their relationship with you as neighbors, trespassing fencing uh, and easement access can you can you respond to those items pretty uh, up front to right so they have a document from 1964 that is a deed that says access we acknowledge that and nothing more they do not have any meets or bounds just de defined or any uh, uh, approach to that access we've been neighborly with them to do so but there's nothing beyond that that uh, uh, needs to be uh, identified as it is a private matter moreover uh, the, the suggestions being made as it to the uh, their adjacent property it has sat there at least in my tenure of 20 years vacant this entire time as they've never asked for access other than just to simply see the property uh, but nonetheless uh, we want to continue to be neighborly as we are with all uh, all folks in it throughout town and uh, you know accommodate their their needs uh, as it relates to a fence uh, we have not suggested a fence uh, because wildlife corridor that uh, you know we're 
we don't want to put up more fence than uh, than necessary. But if it's something that we're uh, told we need to do, then we'll deal with it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a public hearing. I will open it up to anyone who would like to come forward and speak. If you could, if your questions that you're going to ask have already been asked, it would be good of you not to ask them again, or we could be here all night. <laughs> so that being said, uh, it is a public hearing. So Chair Coates? Yes. I'm sorry. Um, could I just um, tell you that I, I'll be keeping a record of all the questions, and that I suggest that if there are a lot um, that we just okay. um, I'll summarize them at the end, and the applicant can answer, and the environmental consultant, I can, you know, so it, rather than getting into um, possible back and forth. So I will keep track of any questions that arise. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anyone like to come up? Please feel free. Carrie Abreu, 1720 Renard Lane. Uh, my mother is across the street at 304 Foothill Boulevard from this project. Um, thank you to Commissioner Coates, Chair Coates, and all the rest of the commissioners. I'm just going to read this. It's a few things that, um, that I've thought about uh, since this project came uh, to existence. Um, Calistoga Hills, formerly known as Enchanted Resort, applied and through a referendum put on the ballot, received approval of an 80-acre 88 acre piece of land from the city of Calistoga Council. The hillside where the road is was basically raped and cleared uh, for the road up the mountain. It defies logic thinking that any, any engineer or layperson, such as myself, uh, how it could actually be used not just as a daily drive for guests, but to arrive at the destination, but expecting it to be used for delivery trucks party vans, picking up guests to go wine tasting, and in reality, hardly accessible by personnel, by fire personnel because of the grade. So after done, the owners needed to look for another access or egress. So they purchased 12.32 acres to the north and now come to amend their use permit to move their auxiliary and accessory structures. Food deliveries, special event delivery trucks, buses, all to keep the working components of the resort away from the guest accommodations. Nowhere, even I just added, in Lynn's report or in Aaron's, uh, does it show that the road to the said property across from Pine Street, it doesn't even show that road except for, oh, and that's only going to be used for, for emergency. Does that mean moving all the buildings is going to have all of those people driving on that on that windy road every day well probably until the first garbage truck meets a guest and that road's so narrow and there's an accident and then that'll all change the EIR was done on 88 acres period not including new lot line adjustments to make a large parcel and that should not be accepted here the scope of this project is large and getting bigger since they've also acquired the seven plus acres south of, of their project that ends up dumping onto 29 near Diamond Mountain Road. A separate EIR should be mandated as the southern property has certified petrified forest wood on that property and should be protected. The EIR subsequently was done in August, the original one. The driest month of the year, no water runoff ever spoken of or how it will be mitigated. Now with the Brown Welch winery approval, and a new entrance for service trying to be established for Calistoga Hills, you cannot tell the public there will be no negative traffic declaration. Because even if you don't drive it, you can look on your cell phone any afternoon from 4 to 6.30 and see the red line that sometimes goes all the way to Dunawill Lane coming into Calistoga. And EIR should be done again on these annexes. So perhaps... Um, before this approval, it's approved. Um, the combination of now trying to amend and throw everything into previous use permit, use permit almost seems as if it's a backdoor development deal going on. 
The citizens of Calistoga deserve fairness in development and the precedence that it should set for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and retain the right to open it if we need to. Oh, okay. Kurt Laracu, 1707 Michael Way. Um, I appreciate your time here tonight. And uh, the last speaker was right on with her comment. This is a new project. It's a new piece of land that's been added. You can't balance it. Your questions, uh, Jim, were quite good. But it never got answered as to what would be on that bald spot on top of the hill. Would that be more lots, residential houses? We, this project demands an EIR that's circulated. It demands it because we've got a drainage problem that's in the EIR, the original one, that it's potentially significant impact. Now, I watched the video of the road going up the hill. I see a little V-ditch for water to go down. The water goes sheet runs down the road. There's a lot of things that are missing here. This EIR originally said, it said a new e, uh, project drainage plants was to be prepared before the approval of the final map of the first EIR. Has that been done, Lynn? The final map has not been approved yet. Okay. So we still don't even have any, and that was six years ago. Drainage plans were approved as part of the grading and infrastructure plans, however. They're supposed to be sitting at City Hall, a project drainage plan that was, was supposed to be prepared before the approval of a final map. So now you have a new piece of property, a new location, a uh, condensed use that's supposed to, uh, you know, work by an addendum. There really has to be an EIR that covers the whole project now to tell us what's happening. The retention water for putting that big project on top with all that infrastructure, it was a big building and, and all the things they're trying to do on a little lot on the side of the hill. There's no retention pond showing. There's, there's no drainage. Now we were told that they connected the utilities to the city at the DeGarda uh, driveway. Well, we have no storm drain that can take any water off of that hill. The original EIR speaks to it. All the, the um, existing drainage plans and, and adequate drainage of the product, the city ha states that it's undersized. Can't take that water. The new laws on building out a structure is to take the sheet runoff, the road runoff, the, 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 every part of it, and be able to hold it. And ever since this project came up, I wondered how in the heck they were going to do it. But now that they've taken that away, where they could have taken a side hill, and it would not have shown to the public with trees or anything else, and had a retention pond. They have no storm outfall. The only storm outfall is Caltrans to the river. So I'm saying this thing has to have an EIR on the whole project with the new consideration, the new land, and it has to be circulated to all parties, from Caltrans to the neighbors. The original one, we, we had two full pages typewritten of people that commented on the project. So this has to be brought out in public. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, see none, I will again close the public hearing and uh, we will see if we can answer some of these questions and if the, Lynn, if you wanna do your best and if we need the applicant to come back up, we will do so. Yeah, actually I'm gonna suggest that the um, project engineer address the two questions about um, the emergency access uh, point onto Foothill Boulevard and how it will be limited to emergency access only and won't be used by project traffic in general and also how the storm drainage will be accommodated. 
Actually, I'll, uh, I'll take the first one, Lynn, as it relates to the uh, uh, emergency egress, as very specifically, our easement through there is only for emergency access. We installed water and sewer lines to connect to our artery, or our connection point at, uh, at the city there near Pine Street, and installed that trenching and a new driveway up the hill. But all resort traffic, guests, employees, garbage, food delivery, et cetera, all goes through our main entrance, and we have designed that road very specifically to meet all fire conditions, all slope conditions, and requirements such that it can accommodate that use. I'll let uh, Jason uh, Kirchman here, our engineer, speak to the uh, water and drainage. Hi, uh, Jason Kirchman, BKF Engineers. So there are three detention basins designed with the resort, two of which have already been constructed. So the, the way they're set up is they sort of sit back into the natural ravines against the, against the roadways. So there are three detention basins which are designed to reduce the runoff uh, from a pre-development condition to post-development, basically being the same. <coughs> Excuse me, the same. Um, in addition to that, there's various bioretention areas for stormwater quality put throughout, which also does slow down the water, um, the, the slow it, sink it. Um, mentality that that's also incorporated and was added since the original approvals uh, the hydrology report that was originally done has been amended and was as Lynn pointed out was submitted with the original grading plans for the Madron Drive uh, the moving of the facilities from the top to the bottom also doesn't increase the amount of runoff in anticipated because the amount of impervious surface is going to stay the same so net net you have about the same might also uh, also include part of our conditions is to accommodate for a hundred year storm and hold the water on site so that it does not dissipate off uh, in a in a storm event so in other words we hold the water and let it queue out in an appropriate fashion so that it does not adversely affect any neighboring property well but th so it is retention not de it's detention not retention well for, for the larger storm events correct so for the smaller storm events um, the MS4 permit requires that basically your everyday rain event would be full, would be retention or treatment um, that goes through a bioretention right. media, and then the larger events is detention. So your your retention would go up to what storm level? The retention is the 85th percentile 24 hour event, so that's just okay. your normal every storm. And the the um, detention basins you've mentioned is that just for the service center, or is that project wide? It's project wide. It appears that you've got a, a detention center in your layout here for the so so even in your um, preliminary I'll call it plan for the service center you already show um, a detention basin. Uh, the ones that you've probably seen those would be retention, not yeah. detention. The and that would be retention. Are, okay. Yeah, those would be those would be the treatment facilities, not the not the hive. Okay. Any other questions of uh, commission? Okay. I will ask each commissioner, starting with Commissioner Abernathy, if they would like to kind of give their position on this matter. Well, um, the uh, two comments during the public hearing both called for a new EIR because the project was either a larger project or it was a called new project. My understanding that's really not the case. It's the same elements as were before, rearranged in what might be considered a better plan on a little bit larger piece of property, but the impacts will not be increased as, as uh, according to this new plan. Is that correct? Yes, that was the conclusion of the addendum to the EIR. A um, couple of things. There's, and I will. Um, sign on to Wally's uh, to Commissioner Abernathy's observation. We all spent Thanksgiving um, reading reading an environmental document. It's just that it's not a new one. It's an addendum, so it will be addended to to the existing uh, environmental document. So there has been new environmental work to look at this new proposal. Um, the 
I would like to, when we would move, if, if we move to uh, a motion to approve this, to I would like to incorporate um, as conditions what, what staff has written out today with a couple of small changes. Um, Lynn, in, in your very first item of in under A, uh, where at the end of the sentence it says that that the it will be landscape sufficient in height and density to screen the improvements from scenic corridor state route 29 within three years of completion of the parking lot or any structures i would like to add to that irrespective of the bingham property um, and then um, at the additional condition i would like uh, for the proponents to to prepare a document that would be a conceptual model for how that landscaping will be incorporated within what this landmass will be um, it, there needs to be some benchmark that we can measure by and that if that could be prepared and submitted and at least distributed to the Commission um, that 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 would could be remain part of the part of the record. Do you do you understand that? Forgive me if I uh, just to, to clarify. Uh, basically, what you're what you're proposing uh, would be a document that would come in as part of when we, uh, uh, assuming we get our approvals here this evening, as a part of that uh, application of the uh, the plans, we would provide also. Uh, a document a plant planting plan that would outline and meet the the specs that you're calling for yes and no the w I would hope that that in your planning process for your final documents uh, that we could get a, an idea of what your that proposal is specific to the landscaping and the and the land dedicated to the landscaping before you've completed the documents it, it it would be terrible to say gee this isn't going to cut it after you've prepared all your documents so if it could be done in process and submitted earlier for comment oh, um, as just as a review uh, as a feedback yes sure no we're happy to do that yeah okay. so i mean in other words again if we're uh if we're lucky to be approved here this evening as a part of our uh, submittal package we would do an iterative uh concept drawing so that Correct. that could be uh, I'm looking for this to be a tool sure all right happy to do that so you understand yeah <laughs> okay uh, that's that's my only other comment mr. Cooper uh, it might be interesting to hear from the gentleman at first carbon solutions uh, addressing Kurt's concerns with the addendum uh, get a little clarity on that just to make sure Specifically, is it uh, they've been sufficient? Um, are the concerns he, he mentioned relevant? Uh, are they been correctly addressed in this updated version? Well, just to back up, um, it was described as a, originally uh, it was characterized that the EIR said that there are some drainage problems with the site. EIR didn't say that. EIR simply disclosed that they were going to do some grading that was to have the potential to create you know erosion and water quality issues so we propose some mitigation tied to construction and that from my understanding is currently has been implemented in conjunction with the project then we also disclosed that we're also going to be adding some impervious surfaces as part of construction and they would need to install uh, storm drainage facilities the uh, uh, engineer there uh, just gave you a summary of them and again those have been partially implemented those also were required by mitigation measures and so essentially I would say this is what's gone on on that side is exactly what was envisioned by the EIR and this addendum essentially reconfirmed that yep yes in fact these uh, EIR mitigation measures will be carried out and in this case it sounds like they have already been carried out so hi this is Jason Bramman first Carmen solutions so as Commissioner Abernathy noted and Commissioner Wilkes uh, agreed um, the project truly is well let me back up so there was an exhaustive analysis of the project as part of the original EIR so in taking a look at this project which basically is simply taking uses that were already were already assumed in the previous EIR 
and moving them to another location. The addendum certainly analyzed that in very much detail, quite candidly. Uh, there was a number of technical studies that supported um, that the, the project as described in the addendum. Um, so it was a fairly exhaustive analysis. The density is the same. The uses are the same. So um, to your point, Commissioner, um, the addendum is satisfactory in our mind. I've been practicing for 33 years, so as a CEQA professional, um, it certainly meets the standards as to um, this type of project and what has been proposed by the applicant. So my two cents. Okay, good. I appreciate the clarity. Commissioner McNair. This project seems like a logical modification to, from the perspective of, of the resort and of the internal functions and the location and layout of all of the functions that need to happen on this, on this uh, property to be successful. I do agree that it would be useful to have a little bit more information about how the applicant is going to satisfy everyone's concerns. And so modifying this uh, condition of approval to include some sort of a preliminary process where they can submit a little bit more clarification about the landscaping and the screening that will happen there makes a lot of sense and I would suggest that they include information about the colors that will be used, the height of the screening that will be included, it might be plantings and as Lynn already points out it might be alternative measures because I think that this, this would want to focus on not only the visual aspects and making sure that you're not relying on your neighbors to mitigate the impacts, but also the the one item that that came up in the the letter from the downhill neighbors is the sound impacts, and I think these screening efforts will also have an important impact on mitigating the sound that would travel from the garbage trucks or from emptying of the the linen trucks or all the the maintenance of the vehicles, all the things that are going to happen in this zone. So I think that developing a, a plan for this area that's very specific will screen not only visually but also help with sounds so that that sort of thing doesn't echo across the valley like we know they can. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this is my turn. <clears throat> um, so back in 2003 when the um, general plan was approved, I was um, a councilman at the time um, spent a lot of time on it and I'll read from rural residential uh, which is his own rural res residential hillside and the only difference really is the slope factor in it but it says lands designated rural residential serve as a buffer between the agricultural lands around the city and the urbanized parts of Calistoga the intent of this land use designation is to establish a limit to the urbanized parts of Calistoga Okay, that being said, I was also on this planning commission when we approved this project. And I had great heartburn, and it's in the record somewhere, I'm sure, about <laughs> the residents coming down the hillside, these structures. And, and, and I had the same heartburn with, uh, I believe it's called Silver Rose still over there. And I've had so many people complain to me about that very thing. So we're back to, I think, Commissioner Wilkes' concerns about the structures on the hillside, what you're going to see, the sound that uh, Commissioner McNair illustrated. Um, I, my problem here is that, um, and, and to be commended that, they, that these folks, you, the applicants um, who you represent, they bought the land, created an emergency access, access, and that's to be commendable. But now to take that, and include it in the overall original uh, final um, EIR, I kind of have heartburn with that. Um, nothing seems to come out um, when it's finished as it is presented on paper. And I guess at the end, and where I'm coming from here is, is that, first of all, we're taking more residential hillside. We're taking more of it. And what does that benefit the community? It doesn't benefit us at all. I'm a citizen of 42, excuse me? Oh, okay, because I have a tendency to last meeting people speaking out and, I'm, you know, just let everybody have the peace. And if you would like to come up, I will definitely open the public hearing for you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I get to the point, I, I have heartburn. I really have a problem with this. And um, there again, I thought the project as a whole is fine. I, this very day, have problems with, there again, the housing coming down the hillside at Sill Rose. And I anticipate we're going to have the same complaints with all due respect to the applicant, uh, the homes that are going to be built up here on this hillside. So I think a lot more work should have been done. 
It should have been independent on, the, on an independent EIR. Um, and that being said as well, granted you're losing less trees on top. And I think a question was asked by one of the individuals that came up, well, what's that land ultimately be used for in the future? I have no idea. Maybe you don't either. But uh, we have a piece of land that's almost undisturbed right now, and it is on a hillside, and there is no visual impact. You have 88 acres to work with. So I'm going to be honest with you. I have a problem with, it, with, with every part of this. And um, I'm probably the lone voice in the wilderness, and that's okay. This is the way the system works. But uh, that being said, if any commissioners would like any additional comments, I would be more than glad to welcome them. And if anybody in the audience wants to respond to any comments from the commissioners, I will be glad to open up the public hearing. I would like to make us just a point in that the we have a commitment from the developer that the the net development will be the same we have X number of square feet of chess pieces on the hill um, and and I don't see a detriment to uh, chess pieces being moved around on 88 acres um, it's if, if those same chess pieces, not having grown at all, now have 100 acres to move around on, I see that probably as a net benefit. Um, there's more ability to buffer and within, within the project, things like that. And, and it goes with the same thing with, with even the, the tree discussion we had earlier. Um, the, I, I'm not seeing a downside in this. I think that the environmental document, as I've read it, is pretty thorough as to this specific site, um, notwithstanding my indigestion about about claiming a mitigation from a neighbor. Um, so I am I'm satisfied that that in the net that this would be a net benefit, and I think that. Making, taking the back house uses inherent in, in this resort, which have been known and reviewed all along, and, and getting them further down the hill, closer to, a, to an exit point, ha, has got to be a positive move. Um, so I, I just say that as, as a point of reference. And very good. So, but it also extends the distance between the areas of, uh, of common use, uh, the dining in that, and the parking lot where it originally was designed and where it is designed now, which then gives more pedestrian traffic, which opens itself up to more people, maybe drinking, maybe smoking, maybe doing things, and opens us up to uh, health and safety issues, in my opinion. So that kind of counters what you just said, uh, Commissioner Wilkes, but that's okay, too. That being said, um, if there's no other discussion, I'll I have one, more, than one more comment. Yes, sir. No, I sort of <clears throat> definitely see the merit in Commissioner Wilkes' comments. Um, at the same time, I also see where you're coming from. And my question is, could not these your questions have been addressed before the property was bought? What just seems cart before the horse. Um, at some point, you would think that some of these concerns would have been addressed before the leap of faith has taken place and the property is purchased, and all and the potential work's been been being done. So. Uh, what is the, the natural order of getting from there to here? I have a question then for the applicant based on what you just asked. Why, uh, and to staff, um, we ask uh, on a regular basis for, for projects, especially sensitive projects, to come with a preliminary design review, simply bringing it for the, co the, the commission to the public and simply saying, here's what we're proposing to do, what's your feeling, and we would love to incorporate your concerns into it instead of spending commendable. You spent a lot of money to try to cover all the technical issues, and you did a good job. I'm not saying you didn't. But at the same time, you would have gotten the response from myself as well as the other commissioners in the community that you might have been able to address those concerns before you got here and w at very little expense. And so that's kind of a question as to why folks are not doing this. Uh, yes, Aaron. I'll, I'll do my best to answer, but uh, again, it is we, we do still need to go through design review as part of this. We have development design guidelines. Yes, the preliminary well. design review is very basic, very Pardon? simple. A preliminary design review is very simple, very basic, and you are able to, to really get the concerns of the community that then you can address those when you go into a more of a formal approach. 
Right. Well, but as you know, and you because you were here as part of the original approvals, we did not own this property or this portion of land, so therefore it was not even envisioned or contemplated. We had those that parking in all these facilities that are currently approved up on the ridge line. All we we subsequent to the uh, approval process, we were able to acquire some more lands. We knew that that element is a is a bad aesthetic. It's not something that uh, is good for the top of the hill. So therefore, we moved it down. And I think all the commissioners that have seen the property and gone through it can see very easily how it works within the context of the site. And, you know, again, it's, you know, we, we, we purchased and uh, came forth and applied for this subsequent to all of our approvals uh, as part of the project. And so, you know, where we, we've come forth with uh, uh, design and layout, and we will, as a part of the structures, et cetera, have to go through uh, additional review. And as uh, Commissioner Wilkes has pointed out, uh, giving us another little threshold to, to conquer with, in terms of uh, uh, landscape and screening design, which we're happy to do. And uh, I think, uh, again, when, uh, when you see it on the site, it makes a lot of sense. It, the site o is an overall better project by implementing uh, this, uh, the, this, this element at this location. But it's still an expansion in your own words. Though not additional buildings, it is an expansion. It is moving it's things. Not an expansion; and, and it's moving. It's moving. But that being said, with a preliminary, we're right back to the simple thing that we have all the time: a preliminary discussion amongst the public and yourself could have answered a lot of questions that came up tonight, and maybe I'd had a better comfort level with it. But uh, that being said, that's fair enough. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The, um, I think you know. I think it's. To fair to remember in terms of of the original approvals part of the original approvals and of the and of the environmental document was really to outline a process and and the process isn't finished yet um, we're just sort of in the midst of the process and and what is before us tonight is it's part and parcel of that process. This is this is not f final thing either. It's basically a footprint as to where something is going to occur, and as this moves forward, we will ultimately then have to look at um, what will take the place of where the parking was at the top of the hill, and we'll be able to see that and review that on its own merits, as well as getting down to you know what color are the good window shades going to be I mean this is this is all a process that's iterative and and so we're in the middle of the process I think that the original approval outlined that process pretty well I just and I, and I don't think that we're here to relitigate the, the original approval uh, we're here to look at this specific point and I'm looking at it saying well this fits the process so from that standpoint Again, notwithstanding the, the things I would like looked at, um, I'm okay with it. Okay. I guess we can, you, you, yes. Well, I just wanted to clarify that I think that our position on this would be very different if the applicant was coming back looking for more. I do agree that moving the chess pieces in this case makes a lot of sense. And once you see it on the site, it's really easy to understand why they want to do this. So I, I don't have the same heartburn. From, from my perspective, I understand the, uh, the logic and the reason for asking for this. No, I agree. I think it improves the project. Okay. Well, then, we need a motion. <laughs> well, again, there's two motions to be made, and, and uh, I'm going to ask for some conditions in, in both of them. So, number one, um, I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution adopting an addendum to the certified final environmental impact report for the Enchanted Resorts project with the condition that that the aesthetics portion of that uh, be given a you're nodding your head no I can't do that <laughs> you yeah, we can't change the mitigation measures in the addendum. The whole premise of the addendum to the EIR is that 
there are no significant changes from the previous project and we can certainly address them through a condition of approval as you've outlined so and we amended. can do that through the second motion yes okay, and that's what that I that's what I would recommend um, you are accepting basically the addendum as it stands without any All modifications right. then on the premise that the impacts are the same then I will stand by the motion as I've read it do you have a second second all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Oh, me. I'm opposed. Okay. Um, secondly, I move that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving use permit 2018-2 and an amendment to the Calistoga Hills vesting tentative map with conditions uh, as written and as I have discussed tonight and is included in, in this. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Could I just note that there's a 10-day yes. appeal period to the City Council okay. for this action? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to matters initiated by commissioners. Any commissioners um, have anything they'd like to say tonight? Yes. Would Lynn, and I did ask this. Do you want to wait for just a second? Yes. cut all the consultants loose <laughs> <laughs> um, I did speak with with you and Zach this afternoon or this morning but um, could you give the Commission an update of what is or isn't happening on the four units at Washington Street that we had approved and had been sent back to us by the City Council we have not been approached by the property owners with any redesign or another proposal I had heard anecdotally they might be considering reducing it to three units but I have not had any conversations with them after the action taken by the council I summarized what the concerns were I, I prepared a, a summary of what the concerns were and sent that to them just to you know when you resubmit make sure that you address all of these and I haven't heard anything back from them or the architect since then. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Any comments? None? Okay. Director's report. Uh, so I just wanted to update you on a few, um, the outcome of a few actions you took over the last couple of meetings. One is that um, on the Buster's variance, excuse me, Charles Davis's variance for the um, structure at Buster's, um, he did not appeal the denial of the variance. So he will be required to adjust the structure so that it meets uh, the maximum height for accessory structures. And uh, the City Council at its last meeting adopted your recommendations regarding increasing the number of cannabis plants that can be grown for personal use uh, to four. And uh, also adopted the zoning code cleanups um, that partially arose from the 1514 Washington Street apartment project. Um, most notably the non cleaning up the non-conforming sections and they were reviewed by the city attorney's office and we adjusted um, some of the language in non-conforming definition um, regarding non-conforming lots that don't meet one of the area with uh, depth uh, standards and that they can in fact be developed but they have to be consistent with otherwise consistent with the zoning code um, with that development unless a variance of course is um, and I would like to suggest that you cancel uh, the December 26th meeting because we do not have agenda items for that meeting. So, so moved. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's it. So the next regularly, <coughs> excuse me, the schedule is December 12th? Yes, we correct? will have a meeting on December 12th and the Lincoln Avenue Apartments project is uh, currently agendized for that. Is, will that be the only at this point the yes. only one okay what was the item again the Lincoln Avenue apartments project on Upper Lincoln okay thank you um, well if that's it um, I will ask for a motion to adjourn to December 12th regular scheduled meeting so moved second all in favor all right. Aye. Aye. adjourn Aye. 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 Aye.